Welcome to Lecture 15, Frames and Machines. In this lecture, we'll be looking at frames and machines, which, similar to trusses, are common types of structures used in engineering. Frames and machines are structures that have at least one multi-force member. This makes them different from simple trusses in that, as we saw in recent lectures, simple trusses are composed entirely of two force members. Frames are generally stationary and support external loads. You see uh, an example of one in the picture here on the slide. Or a, another way to, to describe a frame is that the, the members of the frame, the members that make up the frame, do not move relative to one another. Machines, on the other hand, contain moving parts and are designed to alter the effect of forces. The picture on the left, there's an excavator, which I believe everyone should be somewhat familiar with, probably seen them in operation. And the parts or members that make up the excavator will be moving with respect to one another as the excavator is being used. On the right, there's a fairly uh, simpler type of machine, a pair of um, tongue and groove pliers, where, and I'm sure everybody is somewhat familiar with, with this type of tool or machine, where you apply a grip force uh, along the uh, handles, uh, which is multiplied uh, into a higher grip force between the jaws of the tool. The procedure for analyzing frames and machines, unfortunately, is not quite as straightforward as the procedures we used for analyzing simple trusses. Now we have to deal with at least one multi-force member, whereas with trusses, we assume that all of the members were two-force members. So let's look at free body diagrams when we're analyzing frames and machines. When you start the analysis, you may draw a you, you may start with drawing a free body diagram of the entire frame or machine, and also draw its free body diagrams of one or more of its members. You may just draw free body diagrams of specific members or all of its members. It's it's going to vary uh, depending on the problem case by case. As with other um, equilibrium problems, look for two force members early on and that will make your uh, analysis easier. And note that when we have in a frame or machine, if we have uh, a force common to two contacting members, that when you draw the free body diagrams of those two members, that that force has to act with equal magnitude but opposite sense on those free body diagrams, Newton's third law. And you must do this or else um, you're going to have things going in the wrong direction and um, you need to be consistent uh, in, in, in this situation. Also for a joint with more than two members or an external force, it's advisable to draw a free body diagram of the pin at the joint like we did with trusses. Now let's look at the analysis with respect to the equations of equilibrium that you'll be using. Before you draw any free body diagrams or write down any equations, develop a strategy of how you're going to apply the equations of equilibrium to solve for the unknowns that you're trying to find. A good place to start is by having your first free body diagram include the unknowns that you're looking for. Once you've drawn that free body diagram, count up the unknowns that are contained in the free body diagram and compare that number of unknowns to the number of equations uh, that you have available to you. For instance, if you have, uh, if you're, if the problem is a 2D equilibrium problem, and you have 
three or less unknowns in that first free body diagram, then you know you'll be able to solve uh, for those unknowns because you have three equations of equilibrium available to you. If you have more unknowns than you have equations available to you, then you're going to have to draw additional free body diagrams until the total number of unknowns is less than or equal to the, the total number of equilibrium equations available to you. So let's look again at a 2D equilibrium case. If the first free body diagram you draw, which contains the unknowns you're looking for, has four unknowns, then you've counted up those unknowns and you have four and you know you only have three equations of equilibrium to solve for those unknowns, you have more unknowns than equations available to you. Now you're going to have to draw an additional free body diagram and you know you're going to have to um, decide which additional free body diagram uh, you're going to draw of what member of the frame or machine and you're going to try to pick one that has is going to give you less additional unknowns than um, additional equations. So for instance that second free body diagram if it has two unknowns and you've picked up three additional equations then combined with the first free body diagram that had four unknowns you've got a total of six unknowns and between the two free body diagrams you've got six equations of equilibrium that, uh, that you can use. So at that point you have uh, enough equations to solve for the unknowns you have. If after the second free body diagram you still have more unknowns than equations you're going to have to go to a third free body diagram and so on un until you reach the point where the number of unknowns is less than or equal to the number of equations available to you.